This is a Frazier Rototiller B17. I will show you the complete disassembly of this machine. I usually start by removing the components on the handlebar and the handlebar itself and then the hood. So these always have a slotted bolt here. With a nut. Then I'll take the kill switch button apart. I first remove the screw in the cutoff switch and then the two screws holding the plate on. So I'm going to put a vice grip on here. Here's the bolt. Take this off. Up here, and go through one side of the hole, and just bend it up on the other side of the hole. And that's all that secures the wire on. A lot of times I'll spray some rust penetrator on here. I'm going to spread it open a little bit. There we go. So inside the uh, button goes the screw. And then first you put in the spring and we'll repeat the same process on the other side. The throttle cable, this one's been modified. They've uh, welded on some more support. There's usually a screw under here. Loosen that first and that'll allow you to take the cable out of it. Throttle cable clamp. It's mounted upside down. Throttle cable enters this hole going down the handlebar and will exit out of here. 
So I pull that cable out so I can remove the handlebar. And the clutch hub cable, which was the top one, I also removed that. It goes down to here also. Clutch hub cable will then go to this clamp here. There's a screw bolt and nut to loosen that. Also a bolt here. It attaches to the lever. It's usually hard to get to, so I ended up just cutting the cable off. Then I can remove the other wires once the clutch hub is off the tiller. Next I remove all the cotter pins from the control rods. So this one is the tiller drive control rod which is on the right hand side of the handlebar. That one's out. Then you can just hammer it up and it'll come out. Should. And I just pull it out from the top. Some units have a handlebar adjustment. It's all one piece, this one's two pieces. Remove these cutter pins as well. I'm just going to break the tabs off. I forgot to mention, it would be a lot easier to raise the handlebar up while removing these. Next I loosen the horizontal handlebar springs. There's just two bolts that hold these on. They consist of a short one and a long one. Put two long ones on. The forward and neutral bar comes down to this lever with a cotter pin here. I usually move it backwards. Slide this out. Next, I'll move up and take the cotter pin out of this. Nut that holds the handlebar to the base. I 
again I find it easier just to break the tabs off than use a punch and punch it out. But sometimes you can just hammer on the ends of the tabs. Squeeze them tight together. I'll spray some penetrating oil on. That one's going pretty good. Okay, that one's done. Next we're going to lower the handlebar back down and take the nut off. That one came right off. If they're stuck pretty hard, then I'll use a sledgehammer and punch. wire is your other clutch have wire go and pull that out next I would remove the hood but I want to save these pins so I'll be doing that next these are they come in different styles this one has Rounded head on this end and a cotter pin on the other. This one actually just had a piece of wire in there. And you can use any kind of rod to tap these out. So there's that side. And just repeat the process for all sides, for all pins. To remove the hood, remove this bolt and nut here. Then remove the cutter pins here and on the other side and take that rod out. At this point, the hood will lift up. Then 
then the other end of the uh, height bar of the hood is attached right here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that nut and bolt. Next I'm going to work on the front end. First I'll start off by taking the hose off of the air cleaner and to the carburetor. So there's different types of clamps. A lot of times it's your generic one. Or the original ones. Next I'm going to remove the air cleaner. Since this is a B17, all B17s, the air cleaner is mounted on the gas tank. So the way I do it is I remove the bottom bolt and nut and then the top ones. Then there's two tabs that release the bottom, this being one of them, the other one, and then the whole unit separates. Careful because it's either full of water or full of oil. So I'll take it over and empty it in my oil bucket. Next I'm going to remove the magneto bolt here, another bolt here, next I remove the fuel line, remove the throttle cable from the carburetor. First the one on the lever. And the one on the bracket. That one you'll need to hold a wrench on the nut. Just enough to get the cable off. Then to remove the carburetor, takes a half inch wrench, turn the carburetor over. You gain access to the bracket on the bottom. And one on the choke lever.
you go. Next I remove the muffler. These are usually always rusty. Spray a lot of rust penetrator on the nut. Nine sixteenths wrench. If the nuts won't come loose, take both muffler and the manifold off. And move this choke wire out of the way so it doesn't stab me. If they're too rested, use an air wrench. Two bolts on the bottom. Then I will mount the manifold with the muffler on it into a vise. Use a air hammer, 916 socket. Some more rust penetrator on. And the same thing with the back one. There you go. I try not to be too hard or press too hard on an ear hammer because there's, <clears throat> there's two, a nut on each side that's welded in there. If you go too strong it may rip the nut out. And these, these were really rusted in there. Next I'll take off the fuel sediment bowl. Now remove the gas tank. Remove the spark plug. Next, I'm going to remove the choke cable from the gas tank. Six and nine sixteenths.
Now to remove the front starter, just two bolts, takes nine sixteenths. The fan blade baffle is there to help uh, increase the suction. Next, I'm going to take the cylinder head off, 916th socket. Freezer made two kinds. This is a steel one, and later they went with an aluminum. I removed the cylinder head bolts just using a pipe wrench. Next, I removed the cylinder block, 916th wrench. I find almost all the time these are just snug, they're not really, really tight. This in the back one I gotta get out. So there again, the bolt came out with the nut. So now this should lift right out. Just like that. To change the piston, or remove it, First I line it up so it's all the way to the top and put a pry bar down the fins of the fan, locking it in place and then wrap something around the bottom of the piston so no needle bearings fall down into the crankcase. I just use newspaper. Drag is fine. Stuff it in there. Okay. Next I'll put the block in front of the piston. It's just a block of wood, like that. So let me show you what I've done. Just a block of wood, something to press against. Just a crowbar in the front, through the blades. Now I'm going to be taking a clip ring out of the front. Put 
And there's also one in the back. This one has a lot of grease and oil on it. And using a clip ring tool. There you go, that one came out. Next I'll use a round shaft that's going to be smaller than the actual pin size. I'll just hammer it all the way through. Pistons came all the way through. Through piston pin, I should say. Now, put your hand underneath. Try to catch the needle bearings from falling out when you pull the rod back out again. Lift straight up. So you can see all the uh, needle bearings in there. Now when you're putting needle bearings back in here, I use a 3 quarter inch outside diameter wooden round dowel. And I'll lay my first layers of needle bearings in here. Put the bottoms, <coughs> bottom ones in first, then just start feeding the needle bearings between the wood and the metal. Until you get them all in. And when you get them all in, then you can slip your piston back over it. Take your piston, put it back over. Make sure the washers are on both sides of inside. So when you put all that together, you can put your pin in and push it, and it'll push that wooden one out as the pin goes in. To remove the fan, you have to take the starter dog off first, this piece, and this nut. So make sure you put a lot of rust penetrator around the nut. Okay. Then put your crowbar back in the between the blades again. Then you need a 1 and 1 16th socket and breaker bar. So to remove it, you want to go clockwise. Sometimes you'll have to use an air wrench and, and maybe even stand on the curve the uh, breaker bar to get it broke loose. This one came right off. Then there's a washer inside there. You need to remove the washer. It hardly ever just comes straight off. Go ahead and take the crowbar back up. Use 
using a sledgehammer and hitting on both sides. Vice grips, clamp it on anywhere. And it takes a, sometimes it takes a long time. See, it's already loose. It just came right off. Okay, now. There's a key in here. There's a key right there. You need to take that key out. Okay, now there's two threaded holes in the fan. Make sure they're clean. Then you'll need a puller. And two bolts. Nuts on the end. So first I try one to see how the threads are. If this doesn't work you can re-tap the hole. I've done that a lot. Let's go ahead and put one of the bolts in. I always, I always use a nut and a washer and they'll rest on top of this puller. Okay, now insert the other bolt with the washer and nut. Try to put as much in as I can so it doesn't strip the threads when you're pulling it out. This one, this one's coming out just by me turning it by my hand. But any other time you would take, or like using my ear hammer with a three quarter inch socket. And the same way you want to go clockwise like this. You can see it's already it's coming out. That's what it looks like. They normally don't come out this easy. That usually doesn't happen. Now this also has a key. Go ahead and remove that. To remove the drain plug, I'll lower the front and raise the back end up. The drain plug. It's right there. A lot of times you have to put a bar over a wrench and pull on it and then sometimes you use a vice grip to loosen that. 
it. I got it loose. So I'm going to take it all the way out. 90% of the time the oil will not start draining. And this time you can go ahead and lower the back and raise the front back up. screwdriver and you'll have to push it up through that hole for the plug that you just took off you can't go straight up there's metal in the way you just have to fool your way and wiggle around and get all that grease out of the way so you see it start leaking oil You can use a coat hanger or anything really small. Sometimes I even put uh, kerosene in, in the oil itself. Right now it's just dripping, little small drips. Now to speed that up, I can put my air hose over where the dipstick is, just put it down that hole and force air into it. starting to drip faster. While that drips I do other things. Take my other parts off. To take the front housing off I need to remove these bolts on both sides. To remove these I take a 9 16 Get a socket wrench on here. Okay, those two are out. All right now I'm going to take the drain plug off the transmission and drain all the oil out. Cylinder blocks will usually sometimes have the number stamped on top of the block, but I can't find any number at all on this one. So when it's not marked, 
and that means it's a standard cylinder size 3.000 So in this block was this piston. It has letter B stamped in it. So that'll fit a standard block. That's the magneto adjustable coupler. There's a, a flange to washer in there with teeth on it. You can see one of the teeth is bent out to keep it from moving. We have to take a screwdriver and unbend that tooth. The fiber fiber washer goes on top of this. And then the magneto fits in from here into the fiber. You can do these adjustments when you still have the fan blade on that you can put your pry bar in the fan blades to lock it in place. Once the bolts are off you can remove the front housing now just by hammering on it. It's not too hard. Move your oil pan underneath. It's free now. Taking the gasket off. So it'll just uh, pull straight out. At this point you can remove the crankshaft, connecting rod, all it's all one piece. This comes straight out. Now the front end looks like this. Soak up the oil. Now you can loosen the bolts on this back half of the engine housing. Again using 9 sixteenths.
Okay, I'm going to point out. The throttle cable gets attached to the front of the transmission housing, back of the engine housing, be the second bolt down. It gets attached to a bracket right here. This is that cable. Okay, now you, you're ready to take the rear, rear housing off of the engine, engine housing. Okay, this is the part that the uh, adjustable magneto adjustable coupler went on in the front view. So this is a brass washer that goes in here. And then that piece will fit into this piece here. Which has, this one has a brass bushing in it. Some of them have needle bearings. A needle bearing bushing. Inside here is a insert and that's where the rear Foil seal will fit. To remove the shaft, there's a clip ring here. Here it is, taken out. This gear is held in with a clip ring. There's actually two of them. Okay, once you take the two clip rings off, this gear will come out straight forward. Like so. This piece is held on with four, four bolts, drilled through holes, and then a wire attached through each one. Cut the wire and you can pull it through. Okay, those are all out. Okay, that's a 9 sixteenths. This this is five two four one. Worm shaft retainer. Come straight out. 
And you'll see shims in there, different thicknesses. have another spacer cutter pin there that's the adjustable part of the lever we'll end down here by another cutter pin Once that's off, there's two washers here, smaller one and a bigger one. Okay, next I'm going to remove this cotter pin here. It's going to let this free now. This trunnion which your connecting and rod goes through is held on with a cotter pin and washer. Okay, next I'm going to remove this whole assembly. These will be 9 16 Usually take this side apart first, you'll see why in a minute. We'll remove the back one first. And then remove the front one. Now you can see the worm shaft. So if this off, that makes the whole thing remove forward. So, two bearings, to remove the tines, I will spray some rust penetrator on the cotter pins. Then hammer the tine spring down in the holder farther. Okay, I can turn it back. Now, what that did is That puts some space <clears throat> between the uh, legs of the spring and the cotter pin, making it a lot easier to pull that pin out. You can break the ends off, that sometimes is easier. Or you can just straighten the the cotter pin out and then the pin will just come right out. It 
See it's the leg still on it. It's a little bit harder. There it is. To get the tine off of the tine spring, I use a impact air hammer with a long round point to it. Lay who? Number 31950 3ANN. And I'll also use the hood height adjustment bar. And I'll put the, the tip into one of the holes so I can hold the bar and rest on the Time so, and then the other tip right on the on the tine, so just like this. Okay, and I usually do all of them. Most of the time, they'll just fall right out like that. Now, if you want to put a tine on, it's just the reverse. Put the hooked end in first. Rotate it around. And then back to the skinny part. And then forward again. And you'll air hammer it forward. Okay, once all the cutter pins are out and all the tines are off, then I start taking the springs out using the air hammer again. Whatever way works for you. If you take these off with a handlebar still on, you can lock your tine in place so they don't move when you're air hammering.
the depth gauge is removed here and here this is a 9 16 And the back one is half inch. The wheels take a 5 8 socket. To remove the clutch hub, there's a cotter pin here. Then you want to remove the lockout pin. To remove the nut is one and a quarter socket. <laughs> now it'll just pull straight out. Probably have to use a crowbar to get it started. There she goes. You know, these are the pieces.
oil seal down here. Take the other side off. And this is your dust seal. Now I can remove the oil seal without damage. This takes 9 sixteenths. Remove this lever. The inner nut is nine sixteenths. That'll free up this lever now. Next you want to remove this plug on top. The 3 8 plug. Now down inside the plug there's a slotted screw. You want to remove that. The killer drive axle held on with 9 16 nut in the washer. A lot of times the nut's rusted on so the whole axle comes out. I mean, the whole bolt comes out. A lot of times these are hard to get out. The axle is the axle has a key that holds the housing on.
here's where the bolt goes into. And there's a washer against the housing here. This seal has to come out. The only way to do it is either drill and tap and then pull it out or chisel and screwdriver and hammer it out. So I burgered this one up but I got it out of there. The reason that has to come out is there's a clip ring in there. that holds the bearing and axle in the housing. You'll need some strong clip ring pliers to get that out. If not, I was using these pliers Needle, needle nose and grabbing the two holes and then squeezing in to get enough space and I would put a screwdriver behind the ring and the housing until I pried this thing up enough to grab grab it with stronger needle nose and pulled it out. This side I drilled holes on both sides and I'm going to try tapping it and pulling it out. So that didn't work. After you take the rings off, clip rings, then take the housing cover off. And inside, there's a set screw. You have to take that set screw out. Once the axle's out, then the gear will come out. To disassemble the tiller drive section, you undo four bolts. It takes a 5 8 wrench. Well, I got it on this side. I'm going to disassemble this uh, coupler. It's the adjustable coupler. For your neutral high and loose gear, you can adjust it by this nut here. So this comes apart with the uh, cotter pin. It unscrews here. You can adjust it here, and there's a spring inside. This is just a trunnion that you can. Disassemble with a cotter pin. I mean, the inside nut is 9 16 
this is what holds it on. And sometimes if you don't have any if you can't get it into gear or slipping out of gear, could be the uh, there's a key inside might be broken. There's the key. Okay, now I've removed all four bolts, so now this can come out. Okay, now that this is free, you have a split ring in here. So the uh, front of the tiller drive, clutch dog here will fit on the transmission clutch dog which your worm shaft goes through so when you turn the lever it will engage and disengage here running the tines after you remove the clip ring then just put some vice grips or pliers on one of the teeth and pull up. Inside you'll have some leather pads, shock absorbing pads, go ahead and remove those. There should be a total of eight of them. These are sort of beat up. Here's how the pieces pieces align up inside this housing. The needle bushing fits down in here. Then this rod will fit down into the housing. So the transmission shift sleeve fits in the middle of the axle. That will come out. It rests 
on this fork. So when you turn this shaft here, it'll engage either the high gear or low gear. Now to remove the gears, but first, before you can take the high and low gear out, you need to remove all these gears. And you do that by punching through the cap here, which the axle is at, and then pushing from left to right. Now the gears I need to pull this out. Again, there is another clip ring right here. There's another clip ring right here. You have to remove that. So here's your one gear. which would be your high speed. And now you can pretty well knock this seal out. So then continue pushing this, pushing out. Then you have the snap ring there. And your low speed gear. You have these washers. Another set of bushings that you can press out on both sides. And if you want to take this shaft out, just loosen that set screw in there. So, once you got it all the way loose, remove the screw.
There's also a seal on the rear bottom of the transmission, 5259.